Hi, Sandra. Great to have you back with us again. Hi. Um, really grateful to you for, you know, there were so many questions that came up um, during the webinar. I am, um, and, you know, obviously we never got to them all. So thank you very much for agreeing to um, go through the, the other ones that we had there. We'll just okay. make a wee start. Okay, okay. I'm glad to be back with you and share the knowledge and answer the rest of the questions. Thank There's you. always plenty to answer. Yeah. Um, there seems to be, uh, as much as you, you spoke about pro topic, there was, you know, there was um, some really keen to know, you know, does this make my child's um, more sensitive to the sun? Um, can they go out in the sun after I put pro topic on? So I've heard that from a few. So mm. what would you say to that? Well, the, the 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 company advised that um, you have to be more cautious in the sun. In the sun, uh, in the early days of Protopic, there was concerns around sun related damage and long term effect. However, um, what I say to my, my my families when I prescribe it is good sun protection, sun protection factor, hats, etc. And if they're going to go out on a hot day, I try and get them to build their treatment plan. So they apply it when they come indoors right. um, rather than first thing in the morning. So it's just adapting mm -hmm. the routine. Um, okay. But the, the evidence that's coming out is showing that it's a very good drug and it's been around for a number of years now. But yeah. good sun protection is sensible anyway. Okay. And so um, another pro-topic one, like people have been asking about, you know, I've been prescribed pro-topic and we've got a topical steroid as well. What, you know, can we use them both in the same day? What's, you know, is there any kind of guidance on that, Sandra? Well, you shouldn't use protopic and topical steroids on the same yeah. patch of eczema. Mm -hmm. um, and the company uh, advised not to apply any other products with a two-hour gap between applying the protopic. Okay. Um, of course, depending on um, which parts of the body are being treated, you may find that you're having protopic for the face or sensitive okay. areas mm -hmm. and something, uh, a, a steroid for other parts of the body. And that's fine. Right. But you mustn't put the two on, in, on the same area of eczema. Okay. That'll be really you, helpful you, for people to hear. Yeah, you, have a com you often have a combination of different treatments. So it's just getting your nurse or your doctor to show you mm. um, how to use it, where to use it and what to look for. Um, yeah. That's the key thing is getting the... The recipe right as it were yeah, yeah. And, and asking whoever it is you know that's giving you the treatment yeah. plan just to maybe go through it step by step and explain it absolutely yeah. absolutely because it can become quite daunting when you've got quite a lot going on to try mm -hmm. fit it all in yeah. so try and be realistic and topical steroids only need to be applied once a day they don't need to be applied twice a day the evidence for twice da daily isn't any stronger than using i'd rather my patients use it confidently once a day Mm -hmm. and be or be scared of using it and not putting enough on twice a day so okay. you know, yeah i think that's helpful for people yeah. to hear as well um can you say a wee bit more about what you meant by an emollient holiday people were asking about that so it'd be good to cover that yeah. <laughs> well, well um we talked didn't we about um using topical steroids to get control of the eczema and by mm -hmm. keeping control once the eczema is cleared applying it every saturday and sunday so the emollient holiday is monday to friday all you put yeah. on the skin is emollients and then you put the steroids on on a Saturday and Sunday to prevent the eczema flaring. Yeah. Now, for some children, the eczema does flare and weekend mm -hmm. therapy with emollients Monday to Friday doesn't always work for some children, but it's it, for majority, it does work really well. And it's, you know, realistic in the scheme of things mm -hmm. and for parents to, and I say Saturday and Sunday, but it might be that their weekend is Monday and Tuesday. It's whatever fits yeah. in with their lifestyle. Yeah. Um, another one that just it's popped into my head from that as well. Like, um, so you've, you've went so many days and then the skin start to flare again. Would you, you just keep going with a moline holiday or would you, do you know, or is it just different? Yeah. If they're starting to flare and you're not getting that break with, okay. you know, five days off, it might be for some children that the, as soon as you see the eczema flare, you go straight in and treat it. Okay. And it's finding what suits the individual mm -hmm. children. Weekend therapy tends to work for the sort of what I call the hot spots, the stubborn areas that are, are persistent where you can okay. treat for longer, often with stronger creams and then get on to okay. weekend therapy. Right. Great. Um, so let's see. Um, um, I know you mentioned some about um, eczema and acne, but any other kind of, that's come up kind of hints and tips? Well, I, I mean, share. acne uh, in older, older, older children 
can be a problem and, and there's different degrees of acne i mean some teenagers may just get a few spots others may have bad acne the challenge we've got with young people that have eczema and then go on to develop spots is that a lot of the eczema treatments so the topical steroids and greasy moisturizers mm. can make spots worse so it's it's often finding a less greasy moisturizer and using some simple acne treatments initially and and, yeah. and try not to put the topical steroids on those sort of stubborn areas on on, on of eczema okay. um, as well so it's getting that balance right really um and there are you know if, if a young person does have acne there are very effective simple treatments um initially you can buy over the counter and then the gp's got a clear pathway of starting off with okay. um creams and lotions and then if acne gets bad they often need a course of antibiotics so there is a clear um okay. information the the british skin foundation has a really good um page on um acne and different hints mm. around acne makeup cosmetics which products to use because young people want to do the normal things don't they and wear their makeup etc yeah. so the british skin foundation has a very good uh, link uh, in relation to acne okay and so the two together does seem like I mean that's there's a lot going on there isn't it so it's just kind of you see kind of weighing up what's you know what's yeah, yeah. maybe washed at the time in terms of what yeah okay. yeah just using a simple product to wash and don't you know don't spend a fortune on all these fancy things mm. keep it simple and, and discuss it with your gp if, if it's okay. becoming a problem because okay. with acne you don't want young people to start getting scarring and problems with you know long-term problems so yeah. there is a clear clear guidance for them that's great thank yeah. you for that one i think that'll be really helpful yeah. um Thinking about school and schools are back and um, flare ups to school, you know, and, and that's a lot of what, what we're hearing, you know, some of the, the struggles with school being understanding, skin's more flared when we've got my child's we're going back to school. Yeah. Um, anything you could say about that, Sandra? Well, I think I think like uh, many um many situations, eczema's not always seen as important, but for that child or young person it can have a huge impact on school life. So I think it's important to make the school aware from day one mm -hmm. and link link with the school nursing teams and the support services within the school to make them aware about your child's individual um, eczema needs because yes, eczema is a common condition, but every child's different. So for some children, they might be concerned about how their skin looks, getting undressed at a PE, mm -hmm. um, sitting on the carpet or a dusty floor because we all know what classrooms can be like sometimes mm -hmm. can't they yeah. Yeah. dust or if they go out and play in, and they've cut the grass or they're doing pee outside will they flare so it's it's having that discussion with the, the teachers okay. and having a plan mm -hmm. um that can be implemented so the, the the young person or the child is supported to apply their creams mm -hmm. allowed to have time out if they feel they need um yeah. to put their creams on um so it's, it's, it's negotiation and I mean, I'm very fortunate I can go into schools with the families and we'll initiate plans of care and obviously your resources around eczema yeah. at schools yeah. are really useful yeah. um, but you know I often have to write letters about um, please don't let they can they take their blazer off because there's such rigid mm -hmm. things around what uniform they can wear etc yeah. isn't there and there needs to be yeah, it's that balance of being being like the rest of their peers but actually being allowed to take their, their jacket off or not wear their tie because now they have these clip ties on don't they we've still got metal yeah. so that potentially could be an irritation so it's 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 talking to the to the staff and making them aware and and the young person being able to access their creams um before messy play or mm -hmm. before they go outside not locked in this in the uh, in the reception um office so they can't access them appropriately so there's lots of mm -hmm. logistics around negotiation and talking to the school mm -hmm. so it's the key thing is communication um, chat yeah. so then we do have some you know resources online for, that families can download that can yeah. they are designed yeah. to help support with those yeah. you know um those conversations and you know just to make schools more aware, you know, with some of those, you know, triggers and what they can do to help, you know, be part of the yeah. solution as well. So, yeah. um, and, and it's really helpful, actually, I think, for families to know that they can ask um, dermatology, you know, the, um, their, their nurse specialist to, to support with that as well. I think that's, um, and would you just encourage them to ask for that at appointments, just to mention yeah. school to you, how that's going? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's part of the, um, 
quality of life scores we use you know how's your eczema impacting on school and hobbies you know the quality of life scores we use as part of our assessment so it should be picked up but you know yeah. not everybody i suspect will use that score that's right, that's right. um but it's important you know and, yeah. and they often have other you know a lot of our young people and children have their asthma or they may have food allergies so they will have plans for that yeah. but because um eczema is not always seen as you know as so important as asthma and allergies i mean they all come together it's often yeah. cut, put to one side so it's just raising the profile i mean i've done assemblies i've had children read stories write stories all sorts of things you, mm -hmm. you can work around it depending on the children yeah i think yeah. it is it's that raising awareness with the children so again we've got some stuff from stuff like that's a charity as well yeah. and then also you know they just the, the communication and um yeah it does seem to be the case that you know it's not taken as seriously which is a shame you know, so I think there's a lot to be done around about raising awareness, isn't there? You know, and for the parent just to, to let to let the school know. Um it's, yeah. it's really quite key, isn't it? Um still on the topic of school, um a question came in from um a mum who's asking about, you know, uh, I think she's some some trickies with school and it's um if there's infected eczema, is there any clear guidelines about, you know, can my child go to school or you know, should they not go to school? Is there anything you could see on that one, Sandra? If they, I mean, if they've clearly got an infection and it's wet and weepy and it's crusting and oozy, then I would keep them off. Okay. You know, especially if they're, they're feeling a bit off it, they've got a temperature and the skin's visibly wet and moist. Yeah. They need to have their eczema controlled and, and, and get clear the infection because, yes, there is a risk of what we call... Um, impetigo or, or eczema with a secondary infection sort of what we call impetigenized eczema so if they've got a, a poorly controlled eczema and then um, the eczema gets infected then you can get that sort of and, and it's not fair on the children um, because they get upset people make comments they call them all sorts of some of the names they get called is, is horrendous mm -hmm. so you need to get on top of the infection um, mm -hmm. and and once they're over that and it's healing up and the skin settling down, they can go back to school. But I would say for a good first 48 hours, if for any infection, they should just keep them at home until okay. it's treated effectively and they're, they're, they're well, they're eating, drinking, haven't got temperature. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the skin's not open and raw. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so another one is, um, so I, I noticed my child's skin clears up well during a course of antibiotics. But the eczema then comes back once the course is finished. Is there anything I could do to stop this from happening? Well, when if children are getting recurrent infections, then we would take a swab, yeah. and that's like a cotton bud, just to see what bacteria is is um, triggering that flare of eczema. But I always um, tell parents that uh, if you get control of the eczema, then they're less likely to get infected because I, I you know, eczema. Um, uncontrolled eczema the ba i always say the bacteria have a party in that eczema does that make sense so yeah. if you can get on top of the eczema then the bacteria don't don't drive those infected flares mm -hmm. so it's get control and keep control with your weekend therapy or using your, your treatment effectively um if um just check that you haven't got hands going in pots um okay. yeah. and you know the, the, you use clean spoon if children mm -hmm. are getting recurrent infections then you should get fresh supplies of creams mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and occasionally um, if I've got young people that are getting recurrent infections we use Milton baths bleach baths mm -hmm. which um, if people want to read about that from our Nottingham support group uh, for carers of children with eczema there is a, a blog and information but it should really be initiated by a specialist and that involves work measuring certain amounts of the baby Milton mm -hmm. in a bath and for some children that get recurrent infections it's really good um, yeah. but it should be supervised okay. so that you and the key thing is get control of the eczema mm. is, is the fundamentals there okay. and if they get recurrent infections identify what may be the bacteria and other driving things like hands in pots mm -hmm. yeah so if they're not due like to see dermatology in the near future would the gp be able to help with things like that well, possibly, but I mean, that's one of the indications for referral to specialists with nice guidance is recurrent infections not responding to treatment. Mm -hmm. That should be um, one that's referred on, really. Okay. If they're getting lots of infections, one or two. Yeah. And again, sometimes um, parents get prescribed an antibiotic combination, steroid mm -hmm. and yeah. antibiotic. But again, that should only be for short term national guidance says no more than two weeks so if, if you're getting recurrent infections and being prescribed a, a combination product 
again that needs reviewing yeah so, i'm just like with some families i've spoken to recently where they're already you know they're waiting on to, to be seen at dermatology but um you know they would they're keen to know you know as i think it might need you know looked at it looks infected you know and it's recurring what would they do then would it how do they just phone would you suggest phone the department or yeah. Well, I mean, there's the you know everybody's busy. I'm mean, like, but if you've got a child that's getting recurrent infections, if you don't get on top of it, you know they may they might make them poorly and they may end up yeah. in hospital. Obviously, you've got to make sure you're not missing eczema hepaticum, which is the cold sore virus. So, you know, if if there's doubt, then they should be asked to be sent up urgently as a referral. If, especially if they're miserable and they've got really acute, really red, inflamed skin, mm -hmm. you know, it's crusty. There's little blisters. It's is miserable for them and they need to be seen really if they're not responding yeah. again i think that'll be extremely helpful for families yeah. to hear yeah. um on that note of infection still um I've, I've, um a family have said um we've been prescribed nasal drops after a swab was taken it showed signs of infection um they're, they're keen to know will the drops clear up this infection and any information would be really yeah. helpful well sometimes if um young people are getting recurrent infections sometimes we will take a nasal swab okay. just to see if they're carrying the bacteria in their nose i mean it's difficult to say without knowing all the facts with this yeah, case because it could absolutely. be that the young person had mrsa mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes um if that's the case they would have nasal treatment um but you know um fingers get ferret, ferret up into noses and things so if, they've got, if they're carrying a lot of bacteria in their nose and then they're scratching sometimes we do that it's not common yeah. but okay. it's treating the infection and 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 knowing what bacteria you're treating really so okay that's helpful well believe it or not i think we've we've been through um those extra questions um everything yeah. else you managed to answer and they know the webinars now on the website yeah. along with you know some of the questions there's like the the top five yeah. questions and answers so thank you again for that yeah. and i see that you know there's lots of um, with, with reference to guidance for people to read, like you've mentioned there. The that's good. That's stuff. good. So that's, yeah. that's great. So people can, can look at all of those different things. And of course, there's lots of information on the, the US website, particularly things around about schools, what's available, that kind of thing. Um, so it's worth having a, a wee look around and checking yeah. out what's there. But again, thank you so much, Sandra. That's, um, that's a pleasure. I'm happy to do it again anytime if you need anything. I'm more, I, I can share my knowledge, but hopefully that's useful. Thank you so much.